The greatest common factor is a term that refers to the largest number that divides evenly into two or more other numbers. This is also known as the greatest common divisor or highest common factor. Euclid's algorithm is a method for calculating the greatest common divisor of two numbers. HCF can be calculated using prime factorization as well as through division method in mathematics. So this video, we are going to calculate the GCD of two number using Python programming. The math module in Python offers a number of mathematical operations that can be performed with ease using the module. So stay tuned and learn all that you can about GCD of two numbers. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello learners, welcome to the course of GCD of two numbers. My name is Gaurav and once again I welcome you to all to great learning. Now moving to the agenda for this course, first we will be knowing what is GCD. So we know that GCD and SCF both are the same things and GCD is the largest number which is used to divide the two numbers, right? So after knowing GCD, we will see some example and the practical implementation of GCD of two numbers. So now let's understand what is GCD. So now if I'm talking about GCD, so it stands for greatest common divisor and even we say it SCF. So SCF is nothing but highest common factor. So how to calculate SCF of two numbers? So basically if you want to calculate the SCF of two numbers, then it is the highest number or you can say that it is the largest number that divides both the two numbers. So let's take an example to understand in a better way. Here I am having the example of 4 and 6. So these are the two numbers. So let me find the factors. So when I'm talking about factor, that means 4 is divisible by which all numbers. So we know that it is divisible by 2, right? So I can write here 2 into 2. And coming to 6, I can write it 2 into 3. So what is the common factor here? So the common factor is here 2, right? And what is SCF? SCF is nothing but the highest common factor. So here if you see, then we are having the highest common factor here, 2. So the SCF of 4 and 6 is 2 here. Now let's take another scenario, 12 and 28. So which all numbers can divide this 12? We know that 2 can divide 12 and then even 4, right? So I can just write here 2 into 2 into 3. And for 28, I can write here 2 into 2 into 7, right? Now, I can also write 12 and 28 as 4 into 3 and 28 as 4 into 7. So now, as I already told you that SCF is nothing but highest common factor. So here you can see that highest common factor we are having 4, right? So SCF of 12 and 28 is 4. And you can also split like this way. 2 into 2 and 2 into 2 is nothing but 4. So this is the basic idea about SCF. Now you might have a question. Let's take an example of 2 and 3. So what will be SCF for 2 into 3? I can just write here 2 into 1 and 3 into 1. So SCF of 2 into 3 will be 1, right? Because 1 will be the always common factor. So this is the way to calculate GCD or SCF of two numbers. Now, if we want to calculate the SCF in programming, we can't do in this way, right? So there must be an approach. So let's see the pseudocode. How can we work in the programming? So now let's understand the logic of SCF. So let me draw a number line. So let's suppose that this is my number line. This is one, two, three, and so on. So I will take two numbers here, X and Y. So let's suppose X is equal to 12 and Y is equal to 28. So this will be your X as 12 and y will be here as 28. Now, if I want to calculate the SCF, then how can I calculate it in programming? So what can I do here? I will just develop a logic. So for the Python programming, I can take the user input by using the input method, right? Input enter a number and I can take the value from the user. Now, after taking the two values x and y, what I will do here? So now we have to build the logic. So for building the logic, what can I do? I will using a for loop here. So I will just write here for 
i in range now range will start from 1 right so this is my number line so it will start from 1 so after this i have to write the range maximum value so if i want to find the common factor between two numbers so for that i need the minimum value right so let's suppose x is equal to 12 and y is equal to 28 so which is having the minimum value 12 why can't i take 28 here because let's suppose if you are taking the value 28 so you can't divide 12 by 28 right and we have to also find the common factor so here i will just write here minimum because minimum value i have to take and when you compare 12 and 28 your minimum value is 12 so 12 will be coming here now i will just write here minimum plus one now you might have a question why i am writing here minimum plus one so let's suppose if i am writing here uh, minimum so minimum value is 12 right so we know that this last value will be excluded so it will take the value from 1 to 11 so here when i am writing here minimum plus 1 so minimum value is 12 12 plus 1 will be 13 so from 1 to 13 it will take the value from 1 to 12 right so this will be the value for i so now in this for loop i have to put the two condition so the condition is very clear right it should be the common factor so what i have to do so let's suppose this is my number 12 so i have to check it whether 12 is a factor of 1 or not 12 is a factor of 2 or not 12 is a factor of 3 or not so i have to check one by one so i'll give the condition here if x modulus of i is equal to 0 and the second condition i will also check for this 28 number so this is my y so i'll just check y modulus i is equal to 0 so now what will be i here so we know that i will take the value 1 2 3 4 6 and so on up to 12 it will take right so x value is here 12 so first time it will take 1 and then it will cross check 12 modulus 1 is equal to 0 no then it will take the value 12 modulus 2 is equal to 0 yeah this condition is satisfying then it will check for the y1 so y is 28 right 28 modulus 2 is equal to also 0 so our scf will be 2 for the first time now you might have a question but we have to find the highest common factor right so as we know that this is a loop so this scf value will be updated right once the iteration will continue this scf value will be updated how so here if you see i value will be 4 so we know that 12 is divisible by 4 as well as 28 is also divisible by 4 so this will be the scf and we know that the highest common factor for 12 and 28 will be 4 so this is the basic logic for the scf of two numbers now let's see the practical implementation so now let's see the practical implementation so i will be using here jupyter notebook and you can see that my jupyter notebook has opened so i'll just click on new and python 3 file so this is my file and i can change the name here also so let me just change the name here so i'll just write here the gcd simple name and now what i will do here first i have to take the input from the user so i'll just write here n1 and integer input so i'll just write here input enter a number so we know that when we are writing input enter a number so it will return as the string value that's why we have written integer there so whatever the string value you will be getting it will convert into the integer so we have to take two values to calculate the gcd so i will just once again write here n2 and integer input enter a number okay now i will give one simple condition so i will just write here if n1 is greater than n2 so i will just write here simply so i'll just create a variable and let me give the variable name as minimum so i want the minimum value to be used in the loop right when i'm using the for loop so if n1 will be greater than n2 so the minimum value will be n2 right or i will give the condition else in other cases minimum is equal to n1 now i will just use the simple logic i will just write here for i in range and we know that the range will start from 1 and i will just write here minimum plus 1 and inside this i will just give a condition the first condition will be if n1 modulus of i is equal to 0 and n2 modulus of i is equal to 0 so 
I'll just write here SCF is equal to I. Simple. So now let me write here print and I will just write here print function outside this loop and inside this print function I will just write SCF of two numbers. is I'll just write here SCF so let me execute this so if I'm just clicking on this run you can see that I am getting an error why because I have to use here colon right now if I'm executing it you can see that it's asking enter a number so let's suppose that if I'm giving the value as 12 and in another case I will give the value as 28 so what happens here here my n1 is 12 n2 is 28 right so here you can see that 12 is greater than 28 no so this condition is not satisfying so my minimum will be equal to n1 right so minimum will be equal to 12 here now this minimum value will go into this range so it will take the value minimum plus 1 so 12 plus 1 13 so now I will contain the value from 1 to 13 that means it will show 12 values from 1 to 12 now it will check the condition right from 1 to 12 which can be the factor of these two numbers and as soon as the we are getting the SCF it will be updating right so we know that SCF of 12 and 28 is 4 right so on execution you can see that SCF of two numbers is 4 now instead of 12 or 28 let me take the example 2 and 3 so we know that the SCF will be 1 here so on execution you can see that this the ICF of two numbers is one so this is the basic idea about GCD of two numbers so let's take a quick recap for this GCD of two numbers we have started this by knowing what is GCD we got to know that GCD is nothing but a SCF highest common factor and then after that we have learned how to develop a logic for GCD of two numbers and we have also seen the practical implementation in Jupyter Notebook if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.